Romans 16.5 Greet also the church that meet at their house. Ikumusta rin nyo na ako sa iglesyang nagtitipon sa kanilang bahay. Sambahay, the church in your home. Father, thank you that the world, the planet, the universe is our home. And you are our Father. And wherever you lead us and wherever we worship you, it is your temple. Father, we dedicate our time to you, this place, and our hearts that you may lead us, teach us, heal us. May you be our speaker, Father. Your voice alone is what we want to hear. At kayo po ang mangaral, magturo. Kami po ay handang sumunod. Salamat po sa ngalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Sambahay, the church in your home. What was the ancestor of the sambahay? Ano ba talaga ang ninuno, pinagmulan ng mga pagsamba? In ancient times, spiritual communities were small. Mga maliliit lang. In fact, worship was done by individuals. Genesis 12.7, The Lord appeared to Abram, so he built an altar there to the Lord. Mag-isa siyang gumawa. Nagtumpok lang siya ng konting bato, meron na siyang altar para sa Panginoon, at siya ay naghain ng handog. Worship was done by families. Genesis 8, 18, and 20. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. Worship was done by clans. Several families clustered together, bound by uh, blood, bound by tradition, and by their need for each other. Genesis thirteen eighteen. So Abram moved his tents and went to live at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. So kung saan siya magtira, magpunta, saan siya dalhin ng Diyos, doon siya gagawa ng dambana. Doon siya gagawa ng altar. At tuloy ang pagsamba saan man. Genesis twenty six twenty six. 26, Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent. Ngayon, Kumusta naman yung mga sambahay of the Jesus followers? Kasi yung Israel, nakadevelop sila ng temple, nakadevelop sila ng organized corporate worship, kaya halos nais ang tabi yung sambahay na pinagmula ng lahat. Pero nung panahon ni Jesus, bumalik ang lahat sa dati. The congregations were home churches. Again. Ibinalik ng Ama yung purity of worship Minus all the corporate issues. And what was the pagsamba sa bahay for? Acts 2, 42-47 enumerates to us what the people of the Lord did sa kanilang mga sambahay o pagsamba sa mga bahay-bahay. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So that is number one. Na pinagtuunan ng pansin ng mga Mana na ang palataya ni Jesus nung sila'y nagtipon-tipon matapos si Jesus ay bumalik sama. Ang kanilang focus, the teachings of the apostles, which was nothing more than the teachings of Jesus. Very important ang sentence na ito mga kapatid. Kasi dati, sa kanilang pinagtutuunan ng pansin sa templo, sa mga katuroan ng mga fariseyo, ng kanilang mga priest, ang pinag-aaralan nila were the laws of Moses the traditions of their people, and all the laws and regulations of their religion. But now, nung sila ay humiwalay na sa templo at sumamba kanya-kanya sa mga bahay-bahay, ang pinagtuunan nila ng pansin were the apostles' teachings, no longer the teachings of the Pharisees, not the teachings of Moses. At ano ba ang apostles' teaching, kundi the teachings of Jesus? It was not Jewism as usual. But Jesusness. The faith in Jesus and the Jesus community created a new faith community. So nawawalay at humihiwalay na ang mga Jesus followers sa traditional Jewish religion. At ang paggawa nila sa bahay-bahay ay isa is to declare independence from the temple and also to have the freedom to focus on the teachings of the apostles. 
And also, itinitiwalag din sila ng mga sinagoga at ng templo pag nalaman na sila'y nananalig kay Jesus. Sa pagpapatuloy, they devoted themselves to fellowship. There's frequent, personal, close relationships. Yun ang tema ng pagkakapatiran dahil lagi silang nagsasama-sama. At sa kanilang pagsasama-sama, nalalaman nila ang mga problema ng isa't isa, nagdadamayan sila, nalalaman nila ang mga suliranin. Pagka mayroong pangangailangan, nagtutulungan sila because the home setting allowed nurtured togetherness. Prolonged togetherness gave them a context for pakikipagkapwa. Siyempre, kung dadalo kayo sa mga malalaking lugar, kung hindi kayo may sambahay, pupunta lang kayo. Tapos uwi na, wala kayo nagiging relasyon sa mga kapatiran. Kakasakit kayo, walang dumadalaw, no? may kakaroon kayo, namamatayan kayo na kamag-anak, walang nakikiramay. Kasi parang sisipot lang at aalis sa isang malaking event. Napakahalaga ng merong personal sa bahay. Doon, tunay na umuusbong ang pagkakapatiran. Dahil hindi nagmamadali, may oras. At nakikita natin kung paano na umaandar ang buhay ng isa't isa. Now, they devoted themselves also to the breaking of bread, which is not the usual meal. It was almost a ritualistic meal, the beginning of the observance of the Lord's Supper. Dahil bilin ni Jesus, nung sila'y kumakain, sabi niya, do this in remembrance of me. So, nakita natin ang mga unang mana ng palataya ay nagkakaroon sila ng mga tinatawag natin ngayon na Lord's Supper sa kanika nila mga bahay. At mas doable, dahil bahay yun. May mga gamit para gawin nila yung Supper o yung hapunan at may oras, hindi nagmamadali. As the church became corporate and very organized, nagkaroon na lang ng konti 10-15 minutes sa Lord's Supper sa loob ng program kasi hindi naman kasya sa loob ng mga oras, lalo't arkilado lang ang lugar, nahabaan mo pa at maging full supper yon. Kaya, nawawala yung ganda at sarap ng mga ganong activity pag sobrang dami ng tao. Kaya kailangan magkaroon ng sambahay. Because there is space and time to do all this. And they also devoted themselves to prayers. Outside the temple. That must be clear. Ngayon ang prayer life nila was no longer under the control of the priests. Was no longer the five times a day prayer required at the temple. So as you can see, tahimik na tahimik yung verses. But read the unsaid. Read between the lines. Maraming tension na nangyayari nun. Kasi humihiwalay sila sa daang taon at maring libong taon na kaugalian ng kanilang bayan. At bilang patotoo ng Panginoon na natutuwa siya sa nangyayaring yun, many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Sa pagpapatuloy yan, ang reading natin sa Acts. Dahil nalulugod ang Diyos, sign of approval niya, karaming mga himalang nagaganap. At nagagamit ang mga apostles sa pamamagitan nila at ng ministration nila, nangyayari ang mga kabig-habigani at kagilagilalas na bagay. This is an affirmation of the Lord's pleasure. They were doing it so right that miracles were happening as a matter of course. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. Ganon ka-close ang mga anak ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Jesus, that they were sharing material things. And how did they get to that? Because they shared space, they shared time, they shared lives, now they share burdens. There was a support system for everybody, both material, emotional, spiritual, and personal support. Kaya yung walang mga ganitong sambahay, lalo sa mga ekonomiya o mga lipunan na sobrang advanced na, kinailangan nilang umimbento ng mga artificial grouping para lang magka-support group. So may mga alcoholics anonymous, mayroong mga parents of war veterans, mga widows of war veterans. You have to invent all kinds of social groups kasi pag wala kang support system, kulang na kulang ang buhay mo. Samantalang nasa sambahay lahat yun. Hindi na kailangan umimbento ka pa ng kung ano-anong club at kung ano-anong grupo. Nang isang tao, siguro sampung club ang dapat niyang ma-attendan para lahat ng needs niya, may support group siya. At sabi sa pagpapatuloy ng Acts, 
And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And day by day, meaning regular, non-stop, tuloy-tuloy, araw-araw, attending the temple together. So they were still attending the temple. It was a transition period. So meron sila na nung bulwaga ng Panginoon na meron tayo. Na meron silang sambahay, tapos nakikita-kita sila sama-samang marami. Hindi siguro kasing dalas ng sambahay. Pero regular din yun dahil sabi, day by day, attending the temple together. Bakit anong mapapala nila doon sa temple? That is where their apostles and their senior leaders could minister to all of them. Siyempre, yung mga leader ng mga sambahay, mga bagito yun, mga bagong toklas, mga sanay pa lang. So yung mga senior leaders sila could minister to everybody in a bigger setting sa kanilang tinatawag na get together in the temple. They were getting together in the temple courts, not inside the temple. Dahil malalaki yung mga patio, yung mga lugar, may mga corridor, may mga silungan, doon sila nagkita-kita, isang malaking gesture. It was a grand fellowship that complemented their small group fellowships. So ang dynamics ng kanilang public and spiritual life was meron silang bulwagan, tapos meron silang sambahay. Kumpleto, rekado sila. To have only sambahay and not bulwagan would have been incomplete. And to have only bulwagan without a sambahay would have also been incomplete. And they were doing breaking bread in their homes. Again, this is another kainan distinct from the ritualistic program that was meant to ritually remember Jesus. And then they partook of food with glad and generous hearts. So there were two types of eating here. Yung ritualistic and then the practical, actual kainan. At sa dami ng mahihirap noon, may practical use yung getting together to eat. Kasi yung mga may kaya, nagdadala sila ng maraming pagkain. Para yung mga walang kaya, dala lang nila ay appetite. Because God and our faith in the Lord is a great equalizer. Na ang mga tunay na anak ng Diyos ay distribution centers. Binibigyan sila ng Diyos ng sobra, hindi para sarilinin nila, kundi para i-distribute nila sa kapatiran na kinakapos. And they were praising God. Not only praise the Lord, praise the Lord, nabukulan, praise the Lord, nahulog, praise the Lord. Kaya ito ay napagtatawanan na ng mga iba. Eh. Hindi nila intindihan. But they were praising God not only with words, but with their actions. Na sa kanilang sharing, sa kanilang happiness, sa kanilang katuwaan, they were actually praising God and having favor with all the people. Dahil maganda ang kanilang samahan, hindi sila nakakagatan, hindi sila nagchichismisan, nagtutulungan sila. Tuwang-tuwa sa kanila ang buong kapitbahayan, the neighborhood and the community because they had a natural testimony. Sa kilos pa lang nila, facial expression nila, sa pagmamadali nila pagpunta sa mga bahay-bahay at kaligayahan nila habang naguuwian sila, kitang-kita ng mga tao sa paligid. Kaya napakahalaga ng sambahay. Napaka-importante. Ang bunga nito, sabi ng Acts, And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So there is affirmation. Dumami sila, hindi sa kanilang pangangatok bahay-bahay at paghila sa mga tao para sumalit sa kanila. Dumami sila dahil yung mga kapitbahay nila, sabi nila, gusto ko sumali sa mga to, saya nila. Gusto ko sumama sa mga to, nagtutulungan sila. Yun ang doktrina nila, mabubuting gawa. Hindi puro ngawa na ngawa at turo lang ng turo. Bagamat, importante yun. Pero kung yun lang, kulang din. Their affirmation from God came in the form of God sending more and more people to them. Bakit mag-grow ang isang gawain na natutuwa ang Diyos? Sasabihin ng Diyos, gusto ko tong sambahay na to, gusto ko tong fellowship na to, gusto ko tong church na to, kasi pag may pumupunta sa kanila, naaalagaan, namamahal, napapansin, natutulungan. So, dadalan ko pa sila at padadala ng maraming tao kasi mapapabuti pag napunta sa kanila. So, just na ang problema, mamamahala kung sinong ipapadala sa iyo, basta't alam niyang Diyos na pag pinadala sa iyo, eh, alagaan mo naman. Tuturuan mo, paluluwagin mo ang hininga, pagiginawain mo ang buhay, at mapapahinga sila sa mga pabigat ng pangaraw-araw na buhay. Their very fellowship was their sermon. Very, very effective. Kaya naman, kitang-kita, ang paulit-ulit na pagbanggit sa mga sambahay, tulad ng Acts 1, 13-14, 
Pagdating sa bahay na kanilang tinutuloyan, doon pa sila tumutuloy talaga. Mayroong mga doon na talaga nagtitira sa mga sambahay na yon. They stayed together. Why? Because this was also a time of persecution. So they felt secure and happy together. Pagdating nila sa kanilang tinutuluyan, umakyat sila sa silid sa itaas, lagi silang nagsasama-sama sa panalangin. Yun ang ginagawa nila, nananalangin sila together. At sa ganitong setting mga kapatid, pwede niyong sabihin ang inyong problema, pwede niyong ipagtapat ang inyong mga dinadala kasi may malasakit. Pero kung hindi naman kayo talaga magkakakilala, ipagtatapat mo ang mga lihi mo, baka itsismis ka lang. Kasi hindi ka naman talaga love. Wala naman talaga malasakit sa'yo. So, mahalaga yung makadevelop talaga ng ganito mga relasyon. At para makadevelop ng relasyon na ganito, dapat wala talagang judgmental. Walang self-righteous. Kasi, hindi mapapalagay ang loob sa'yo kung ikaw yung masyadong judgmental at masyado kang holier than others kung makaasta-asta. At sa pagpapatuloy, kasama ang mga babae at si Maria na ina ni Jesus. There was a very special mention of women kasi before Jesus, yung mga women, hindi kasali. Hindi sila pinapansin. Sila yung mga property, mga utusan. Pero nung dumating si Jesus, Jesus affirmed women. Jesus allowed Mary to sit with the men, to learn at His feet. Jesus allowed the women of Galilee to follow Him all the way to Jerusalem and even support the ministry. Jesus talked to the women at the well and Jesus allowed the bleeding woman to touch Him. And above all, Jesus declared His resurrection to women first. Yung mga babaeng inechepwera ng kultura ng Israel, ibinalik ng Diyos through Jesus sa kanilang dapat kalagyan. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. It's very important that it was mentioned because she was there praying together with the other people. Hindi siya ang dinadasalan. Kasama siyang nagdarasal sa Diyos sa ngalan ni Jesus. Gayon din ang mga kapatid ni Jesus, nandun din sa sambahay. So it was a family affair. Napakasaya, several families clustered together. Romans 16.5, greet also the church that meets at their house. So remember, the church is not the building, it's not the house. The church are people meeting together in the name of the Lord. So wherever we go, that is church. At pag marami tayo, wherever we go, that is the temple, bulwagan. Kasi ang bulwagan ay tao, hindi building. Romans 16.5 is very clear. The church meets at a house. The church is people, not a place, and not a religious brand. It is a fellowship of people that agree together in the Lord and love each other. 1 Corinthians 16.19 Kinukumusta rin kayo ni Naakila at Priscilla at ang mga kapatid na nagtitipon sa kanilang bahay sa pangalan ng Panginoon. Here is a couple hosting as ang bahay. Bakit hanggang ngayon alam natin ang pangalan ng mag-asawang ito? Bakit hanggang ngayon binabanggit-banggit at inuungkat? Dahil binuksan nila ang bahay nila sa sambahay. Kung sinolo nila yon, wala sila dito kayo sa Biblia, hindi sila kalista. At malista ka man o, hindi sa text, at nakasara na, so huwag ka na mag Pero nakalista ka sa listahan ng Panginoon. When you open your house to become the home church. One of the best ways to decorate your house is to fill them with fellow believers. Pray together there, praise God there, and help each other. That is the best decoration of a house. Most precious in the eyes of God. So Colossians 4:15, give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. So here is a woman, probably unmarried, probably single or whatever or widow, pero walang ikinabit na pangalan ng lalaki sa kanyang pangalan. So independent siya sa buhay at binuksan din niya ang kanyang tahanan para maging sa buhay. Hanggang ngayon, pinag-uusapan natin sila. What is the challenge in our time? To recreate, to return to, and to propagate the sambahay ideal. 
because that was the ideal of the purest form of ancient faiths. Mga panahon nila Noah, nila Abraham, nila Isaac. At yan ang form nung panahon ni Jesus and the first generation Christians. It worked so well. At sa panahon na ito, especially kung may big Omega Church, kailangan kailangan ng sambahay. Kung baga, ang bulwagan, ang mega church ay batalyon ng mga kawal. Marami, pero ang sambahay, platoon. Kunti lang, mga labindalawa, sampu, kung ano man ang number ng platoon nila, because the battalion is for conventional warfare and the platoon is for guerrilla tactics. A battalion of many platoons is adaptable, indestructible, and effective. A ship that is great in size cannot turn so quickly. Kaya dapat member kayo sa bahay. Para adaptable. Meron kayo dapat batalyon at meron kayong platoon. Para katulad nung panahon ng hapon, di ba? Bumagsak na ang bataan. Sumuko na ang mga batalyon. Pero buong panahon ng hapon, ang daming guerrilla groups and units na hindi na pasuko, hindi na huli, kasi ang maliliit na grupo, adaptable. Kaya dapat din sa ating spiritual uh, battles, may mga platoon level ang ating warfare. Nakaka-adapt tayo kahit anong mangyari. Because the church is indestructible, it only changes forms. And we are day by day. Our form is that we have no form. We adapt kung ano ang kailangan. Now, what is the opportunity in our time in the context of the sambahay to enjoy the family atmosphere of the church? Hindi lang corporate atmosphere, hindi lang big crowd atmosphere, but kapalagayang loob, kasama, kasangkot, kaisa mo, yung iyong kapatid sa Panginoon. To enjoy close and supportive relationships na meron ka mga karamay, kakampi at kasangga sa buhay at napakatibay ng inyong Pinaninindigan si Jesus. Hindi ko ano mga artificial at mga temporary mga adhikain sa buhay. And to enjoy simplicity in administration. Kaya requirement natin sa sambahay, walang elaborate music. Kung walang tugtog, a cappella. Walang, hindi tayo nakapag-practice. Uy, mag-practice tayo kasi kakanta. Walang ganun-ganun para easy lang, madali. Para walang stress. Kanta, kay music, may instrument, kaya wala. Kaya may pagkain, kaya wala. Basta merong pag-aaral ang mga turo ng mga apostol. Nagaling kay Jesus, may pananangin, may pagsasama-sama, tuloy ang ating pagsamba. Hindi kailangan maraming requirement. Kaya ang mga sambahay natin, walang ganun. Walang collection, walang mga donation sa sambahay, wala. Pero kung nakikigamit kayo ng bahay ng may bahay, mabuti siguro mag-share konti sa kuryente kasi lumalaki ang gastos nila pag nandun tayo sa mga konting mga panglinis-linis ng mga dumudumi nilang banyo. Pero dapat simple ang sambahay. Church, very, very simplified. Yun. So pagka sambahay, walang pera-pera issues. At saka, pag naging sambahay yung mood, walang mga full-time workers, hindi nyo kailangan magpa-sweldo, magpa-SSS, magpa-pag-ibig, at kung ano, may mga ganyan-ganyan pala para nagkatuturo lang mga kung isang verse, yan na pumunta. So, napakahalaga na makadevelop tayo ng mga doubly productive pastors. I call them DPP. My dream and vision and prayer is that in the next generation of day by day, wala tayong full-time workers. Puro mga doubly productive pastors. Ibig sabihin, they can do their trade, they can keep their employment, or they can do their businesses, and then they serve as pastors. Kasi sa Saudi Arabia nga noon, wala naman sa aming full-time worker. Lahat may kanya-kanyang trabaho, umandar naman yung church. Para hindi masyadong money issue ang laging nagiging uh, pinagtutuunan ng pansin. So, mga workers as volunteers, uh, with personal careers and employment and businesses, this is what we like church workers to become, especially in the next generation. In the sambahay, we make Jesus very personal. Kaya, lagi kong inuulit-ulit, join a sambahay. Because Jesus taught and exemplified individual or small group spiritual activities. Sa paglaki ng kapatiran, sa pagdami ng kapatiran, lalong mas dapat i-develop ang sambahay. Mga kapatid, huwag kayong makontento, dapat kasama kayo sa sambahay. Hebrews 10.25, huwag nating kaliligtaan ng pagdalo sa ating mga pagtitipon, gaya ng nakasanayan ng iba. 
Hebrews is telling us, prioritize your presence and attendance and involvement in church activities. At sabi niya, sa halip, palakasin natin ang loob ng isa't isa, lalo na ngayong nakikita nating malapit na ang araw ng Panginoon. So isa pa yan na natungyayari pag kami sa bahay ka, pagpapalakasan ng loob. Mahalaga na may personal relationship. Yun ang gusto ni Jesus para sa atin. Make your house a sambahay. Para kompleto rekado. Nung wala pang templo ang Israel, very mobile ang kanilang pagsamba. Exodus 40, 36 to 37. When the cloud rose from the holy tent, the Israelites would begin to travel. But when the cloud stayed on the tent, the people did not move. They stayed in that place until the cloud rose. So yung kanilang pinagtatagpuan with the Lord, eh, isang tent lamang, pagka yung cloud, yung pillar of cloud, na siyang representative ng presensya ng Panginoon ay tumigil sa isang lugar, itatayo nila ang tent. At habang hindi umaalis yung cloud na yun, nandun sila. Pag lumakad yung cloud, bunot ang tent, lakad na naman sila because they were on a pilgrimage. The people were traveling when the Lord makes them travel. At misto lang tayo yun. Sabi, doon kayo ngayon, dito kayo ngayon. Hala, bunot ang mga tent at doon pupunta. So napakahalaga na tingnan natin isang super sambahay, mga kapatid. Acts 10, 1 to 44. In the city of Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a Roman army officer. He gave much of his money to help the poor people and always prayed to God. Hindi siya Israelite, hindi siya Jew. Siya ay isang Roman officer. One afternoon, Cornelius had a vision. He clearly saw an angel from God coming to him and saying, Cornelius, staring at the angel and feeling afraid, Cornelius said, What do you want, sir? The angel said to him, God has heard your prayers and has seen your gifts to the poor. He remembers you and all you have done. Imagine an angel telling you, Alam ng Diyos ang mga kabutihan mo at ginugunita ng Diyos. At ipinadala niya ako sa iyo ngayon dahil tuwang-tuwa siya sa iyo. Send some men now to the city of Joppa to get a man named Simon who is also called Peter. So God wants to bless Cornelius through Peter. Walang kamalay-malay si Cornelius sa iyong kanyang mga kawang gawa, kabutihan, pananalangin, eh nakaregister pa na sa heaven. At isang araw pinadala siya ng anghel para sabihin, ipasundo mo si Peter, papuntahin mo sa bahay mo. The men Cornelius sent had found Simon's house. The men said, A holy angel told Cornelius to invite you to his house so he can listen to what you have to say. Sabi ng Diyos, Ang bait-bait dito Cornelius na to, matulungin, madalanginin, pero kulang, kailangan makarinig siya ng solid apostolic teaching. Solid teaching of Jesus through the apostles so yung anghel pumunta sabi, ipasundo mo si Pedro sa ganitong address, papuntahin mo sa iyong bahay. So the messengers fetched Peter and Peter got into the house. The next day, they came to the city of Caesarea. So dumating sila Peter sa bahay ni Cornelius. Cornelius was waiting for them and had already gathered his relatives and close friends at his house. Tinipon niya mga kamag-anak niya at mga kaibigang matatalik sa kanyang bahay para pagdating ni Pedro nandun sila. Cornelius turns his house into a gathering place. Then Peter went inside and saw a large group of people gathered there. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who were listening to his speech. Can you imagine? Nanaog ang espiritong banal, pagkarinig na pagkarinig ng mga tao ng mga salitang namutawi sa labi ni Pedro. The Holy Spirit was poured on the sambahay. Everyone was blessed. Turn your bahay into a sambahay. Or attend one. The message is very clear. Acts 18, 24-26, another case. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and thought about Jesus accurately, though he only knew the baptism of John. 
he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. So here is a Jew, Jewish education ang meron siya. Then he learned about Jesus and he was teaching accurately about Jesus actually. And he was bold, pero may kulang dahil ang alam lang niya yung baptism ni John. An eager but an under-informed messenger. Puro baptism lang ang issue, baptism with water in particular, kulang sa Holy Spirit. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, remember this is the couple that opened their house, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. What do we want to see here? That Priscilla and Aquila turned their house into a sambahay. Priscilla and Aquila teach an already eager teacher about the way of God, about the way of Jesus, particularly Jesusness. And then, of course, Apollos became an even more effective teacher. So make an open a sambahay. Mari ang opisina, pagawaan, restaurant, schoolroom, anywhere. Then invite Peters, anointed teachers, to your sambahay. Or you teach in a sambahay. We have training programs. And invite learners to your sambahay. Maraming gifts na bigay ang Diyos. Lahat tayo may lugar. Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. Christ gave gifts to people. He made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to go and tell the good news, and some to care for and teach God's people. Christ gave these gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving, to make the body of Christ stronger. So lahat tayo mayroong dapat papel ng panan para patibayin ang bulwagan, patibayin ang sambahay, at tayo rin lahat ang makikinabang kung matiba yun. Matthew 18.20 Whenever two or three of you come together in my name, I am there with you. Yan ang pangako ni Jesus. Bless people with your sambahay house and bless your house with sambahay people. Promote this very, very important activity in your family, among your friends, like Cornelius did. Benefit from all that the Lord has prepared for His people. Panginoon, salamat po. Dahil meron kaming sambahay na pwedeng salihan at itayo, kayo po ang magturo sa amin kung paano kami mag-aambag ng mga binigay mo sa aming talents para ito ay palaguin, patibayin, at hindi lang kami kundi marami ang makinabang. Salamat po sa aming kapatiran, salamat sa pagmamahalan, pagtutulungan, na wa ito ay sumidhi pa, gumanda pa lalo at tumibay sa aming pag-cooperate. Pagbulay-bulayan natin ang halaga ng mga bagay na ito at pag-isipan kung paano tayo dapat magkaroon ng reaction. Father, continue to speak to your people. Teach us our place in the sambahay that you like for us to enjoy. Be alone with the Lord in silent reflection. to you, mga pamangkin. Dito tayo mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Dito tayo mag-aral ng mga praktikal na bagay, magdalanginan para sa isa't isa, makinig ng mga mensahe, at dito tayo magsasama-sama spiritually sa ating official Ed Lapis YouTube channel na ang address ay Sabi ni Kuya Ed. Remember, dito tayo ha, Sabi ni Kuya Ed ang ating official YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell for notification. Like, comment, and share our official YouTube channel. Visit Ed Lopi's website for daily devotion, audio podcast, latest video message, send your prayer request, 
subscribe to mailing list and more. Visit edlopis.com.ph.